Like a man in defeat, eight pushbacks. Extraordinary. Come and have a go quickly if you think you're clever enough. See if you can catch him out. We'll see you next time on The Chase. Goodbye. Potato. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Ann Sanders. Good afternoon. We begin with breaking news and reports of multiple injuries after a car slammed into a shop in Sydney southwest. Live now to Leonie Ryan at the scene at Greenacre. Leonie, what happened there this afternoon? Good afternoon to you, Anne. Well, this unfolded in the last hour or so at Greenacre. As you can see behind me here on Waterloo Road and June Parade, multiple emergency crews are on scene, including ambulances and police. You can see from the vision that Channel 7 News has obtained. Smoke can be seen billowing from behind the panel van before it smashes through the glass window of the shop. The shop is the Hijab House. It's believed as many as eight people are injured. Ambulances are treating those those patients at a triage which has been set up. Police are expected to be on the scene for some time as yet. Many people are being taken to hospital as we speak. Anyone travelling nearby Anne is being asked to avoid the area. So a terrible scene there this afternoon, Leone. Do we know how this occurred? Was it an accident? Was there some sort of motive behind it? Well, that will be at the heart of the police investigation, and it's too early to say, and they don't want to speculate, but literally hundreds of people are standing here behind me and uh, I guess wondering if one of their loved ones has been injured in this accident. Police are appealing for witnesses to come forward and no doubt asking for any vision, whether that be phone vision or CCTV, to send it through to them. All right, a lot of emergency uh, services on the scene there. Have you seen how badly injured people are? There are varying degrees of injuries and we've seen some with soft tissue injuries. They're able to hobble away where some are actually being carried to ambulances and they're covered in blood. So uh, the ambulances here are being set up behind me here at the service station, which is across the road from the shop where this accident did happen. Uh, some are being taken away to ambulances while the others that are less seriously injured uh, are here sitting in the gutter talking to police and paramedics. Yes, I can see some people there. They're uh, very close to where you're standing. Have you had a chance to speak with any witnesses? Well, some are quite emotional, Anne, and understandably so. Uh, they can't get into the crime scene here, which police have closed up a number of the roads here around the shop, which is the hijab shop. Uh, as you can see from this vision that's being played, a number of paramedics are treating people on the ground, speaking to people, but uh, very emotional scenes here where... Uh, uh, police officers have actually had to ask witnesses, hundreds of witnesses, who have been standing here on the street to move back. And Leone, um, the car is still inside that shop. Any sign of the driver? Uh, as we can see from where we are, Anne, we're probably about 50 or 20 metres away from the actual scene, and it looks like they indeed are treating someone in uh, that, uh, that panel van which s appears to have smashed through the front doors of that shop. So uh, we haven't seen the driver as yet, but I believe that he is being treated um, at the scene. All right, Leonie, we'll leave it there for now, but we will return to you again at that terrible scene in Green Greenacre. Leonie Ryan on the scene of the car going into a business, the hijab house on Waterloo Road in Greenacre. Sydney's beleaguered rail network, as well as Western Sydney, are set to be big winners as the state government announces billions of dollars worth of new projects, delivering thousands more jobs. Reporter Alex Hart is following the story. Alex, what are the details? Well, and the state government is desperate to get the economy going again and get people back to work, whether that be through public money or private investment. Around $600 million will be spent upgrading Sydney's rail network, creating 550 new jobs. And in essence, make the lines like a turn up and go metro service involving the Tangara fleet and the new inner city fleet. In a big economic boost for regional New South Wales, the Snowy 2.0 project has been approved. An estimated $4.6 billion will be invested in what will be Australia's biggest energy storage project, creating around 2,000 jobs during the construction phase. It means it's the green light now for Snowy 2.0 and we're going to get on with the works. And in Western Sydney, planning approval has been fast-tracked for two projects. One is a $26 million upgrade of a brick production plant in Horsley Park. The other is a waste recycling facility 
in Penrith that was strongly opposed by neighbouring businesses. That will generate 37 new jobs through construction and ongoing operations. The Premier has hinted at an imminent much needed boost to the hospitality sector too with an increase in the number of people allowed to go to pubs and clubs expected to be announced within days. And Thanks, Alex. The Trump administration has again lauded Australia for its role in clinching a global coronavirus inquiry. The praise part of an attack on China. Live to Tim Lester in Canberra. Tim, this applause from the US Secretary of State comes at an awkward time. It is an uncomfortable moment and senior government ministers here are working to limit trade damage with China. They cannot have enjoyed watching the US President's foreign affairs chief hammer China and in the same breath he preys on Australia. The Chinese Communist Party chose to threaten Australia with economic retribution for a simple act of asking for an independent inquiry into the origins of the virus. Mike Pompeo called China's contributions to fighting the pandemic paltry and accused Beijing of hostility to free nations. We stand with Australia and the more than 120 nations now who have taken up the American call for an inquiry to the origins of the virus. And his boss matched the attack on Twitter. President Trump arguing China's incompetence with coronavirus amounted to a mass worldwide killing. The U.S. is less than six months from a presidential election with the candidates accusing one another of being too close to Beijing. This as the Morrison government tries to limit trade retaliation from China. Already a new barley tariff and a ban on four meat processing plants could cost Australian farmers billions in coming years. When you get the sorts of pronouncements that are coming out of Washington by Trump and Pompeo, quite clearly the rest of the world thinks it is irrational. We are being very seen, and we're seen as being very close to that, and the issue really is how we can distance ourselves to some degree from the sorts of pronouncements that are coming out of Washington. And Tim, the Head of Treasury believes some have understated the economic damage from coronavirus. That's right, Anne. Stephen Kennedy has appeared here today before a Senate committee. He was asked whether he thinks we're heading into a global recession. I think the word we've gone well past the word recession. I would say that the outlook is, is I'd say, significantly gloomier than the one outlined by the IMF. Though Mr Kennedy does say that he believes Australia is now either at or likely near its unemployment peak and Treasury still expects that to be about 10%. And... Tim Lester in Canberra. Thank you, Tim. Now to some terrifying pictures from Sydney's southwest. A driver has been caught on camera slamming into a parked truck at Lakemba. The two people inside have head injuries and were pulled from the vehicle which burst into flames. We'll have more details from our reporter on the scene coming up shortly. A man is this afternoon in custody suspected of stabbing his wife to death at their home in Sydney's west. She would tried to protect herself with a restraining order but it wasn't enough. Natasha Squarey has more from the scene. Police say the 27-year-old woman's brother was the one who made the horrible discovery last night, finding his sister's body in her bedroom and her husband of four years standing nearby. He called police and the 31-year-old suspect was arrested at the Quakers Hill home. It's alleged he'd cut his wife's throat with a 15-centimetre kitchen knife, which police say was found next to her body. Devastated neighbours say they heard the victim screaming and crying moments before she was murdered. Waking up to a new something like this is you know, it's very shocking and very disturbing. The accused killer was treated for some minor cuts at Blacktown Hospital before being released this morning and taken to Riverston Police Station where he was quizzed by detectives. It's been revealed today the couple has been married for four years and last month were having some trouble and went together to nearby Quakers Hill Police Station. Officers there took out an AVO which prevented the accused from assaulting his wife. However, it didn't stop him from living with her. There was a standard order in regards to not assaulting, molesting, etc. in regards to the orders. There was no exclusion order in regards to the location or the home. The 31-year-old accused killer remains in custody and is yet to be charged. Brazil has hit a record high for new coronavirus cases as health officials there admit they're losing the battle against the virus. 
Workers in Sao Paulo are digging back-to-back -back burial plots so thousands can farewell loved ones. Nearly 20,000 new cases were reported in the past 24 hours, contributing to the largest single-day increase in infections globally since the outbreak began. Catastrophic dam failures have caused mass flooding in America's Midwest with thousands forced to evacuate their homes. Properties are now underwater with flood levels continuing to rise. A rush to higher ground as gushing water swallowed entire neighbourhoods. The dam has failed. 100% failure. Evacuate. It's crazy. Just surreal. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Twin dam failures in central Michigan triggering catastrophic flooding, destroying homes and businesses. I never thought in my life that the dam would break. This is real bad. I don't know how long it's going to take for the water to go down now. The water reaching rooftops and record highs. The river here cresting at more than 10 metres. Water seeping into transformers, tossing trailers over. Stark images showing the human toll. It's devastating. We know that this water is incredibly damaging. A jewel crisis crippling the state. It's hard to believe that we're in the midst of a hundred year crisis, a global pandemic. Um, and that we're also dealing with a, a flooding event that looks to be the worst in 500 years. Forecasters warning it may not be over, with more rain expected by the end of the week. In the United States, Ashley Mullaney, 7 News. Victorians are scrambling to patch up their homes and fast after a storm described as a mini tornado left a trail of destruction. 60 homes were damaged when the system struck at the town yesterday, ripping off roofs, sending wheelie bins flying and frightening residents. Crews are now racing to clean up and repair homes before more rain falls over the coming days. And David Brown joins us now for a check on our cool and rainy weather. Good afternoon, Brownie. Yes, good afternoon, and Well, it's looking quite nice across our city at the moment. But yes, there is more rain in the wind tonight and again tomorrow. The reason why an intense low is expected to lob off the coast overnight, delivering heavy rain coupled with gale to storm force coastal winds for several hours. So yes, it's time to batten down the hatches. At the moment though, in our city, it's sitting on 18 degrees. Pressure continues to drop through the floor. As we go to the radar, this is the low we're expecting to develop off the coast tonight and uh, tomorrow morning. Big waves are also expected to enter the mix as this low whips up gale to storm force winds near its core and of course those waves are expected to exceed seven metres. But having said that, expecting bursts of heavy rain to unfold overnight according to our model, but the rain will gradually contract to the coast and eventually clear offshore. I think that will happen during the afternoon. But uh, the totals, this is what our model is predicting. Have a look at this. Vast areas of our coast, potentially 50 to 100 millimetres. That includes the CBD as well. And of course, totals like that usually leads to flash flooding. The bulk of this falling overnight and at first tomorrow. Weekend weather in detail, top of the hour, Anne. All right, we'll look out for that. Thank you very much, Brownie. Still to come in Sydney's afternoon news on 7, a landmark ruling, potentially billions in back pay. The casual workers now entitled to paid leave. The long road back to Queensland now caught for a man accused of killing his parents. And Captain Tom opens up about his unexpected but lovely knighthood. Getting my house renovated is like a golden ticket <laughs> to the rest of your life. Oh. <laughs> this is the house of our dreams. Mum's whole house reveal. House Rules, Sunday at 7. We know you've always worked hard for your money. In these uncertain economic times, who do you trust to protect your wealth? Invest with Latrobe Financial, Australia's multi-award winning wealth manager and leading credit specialist. Trusted by Australians for more than 60 years. Guess who's on the telly? Mummy! Hi, Mummy! Hi, sweetheart! Proudly feeling Australian hockey fans big and small. Sultana Brown. Full on days start with full on fibre. Join AHM Hospital and Extras Direct and you'll get six weeks free. 
Plus, we'll waive any two and six month waits on extras. Yay! Whether you're a single, a couple, or a family. It's that simple. Uh, that doesn't look very simple. Offer ends June 30. Find out more and join AHM Direct today. AHM, the simple bit. The world's most exotic fragrances are made by nature. That's why we've created Botanica fragrances infused with natural ingredients that are responsibly sourced. Botanica by Airwick. Outside, it's something to look at. But inside, it's a space to be. A space we fit our lives into. A space that brings us closer. That spans generations. Where we go to let go. In a Mazda, this space is 100 years in the making. And summed up in two words. Zoom, zoom. family together. Introducing Optus Family Plan with four sims and 250 gigs of data to share. Roger, roll over. Do it for a schmackos. Miss a moment. New by Solvin Duo Syrup is a two-in-one formula <laughs> traditionally used to soothe an irritated throat and relieve an associated dry cough. By Solvin Duo. Moments uninterrupted. Available at selected retailers. You're watching 7's 4pm Sydney News. This is a view from Randwick, where right now it's 17 degrees. Let's return to our breaking news now. There is an unfolding emergency in Sydney's southwest this afternoon after a car crashed into a shop at Greenacre. At least a dozen people have been injured. Emergency crews have set up triage there. This video, recorded at the scene, shows what appears to be an SUV emerging from a cloud of thick smoke before ploughing into a shopping strip. Police say the SUV crashed into a vehicle, stopped at the traffic lights before continuing into the shop. None of the injuries at this stage are thought to be life-threatening. Baronia Road between Waterloo Road and Noble Avenue is closed in both directions. These are live scenes. We'll cross live to our reporter on the scene of this developing story shortly. In other news today, a Queensland man arrested in Sydney and accused of murdering his parents says he's overwhelmed and doesn't know if he'll plead guilty. Christopher Puglia had been living with his mother and father at their bed and breakfast property north of Brisbane. On Sunday, their bodies were discovered while the 31-year-old had fled. Given the nature of the allegations, it goes without saying that he's pretty overwhelmed. That's all he really said to me. He was extradited back to Queensland overnight. Police are laying a fourth charge of attempted arson. Employers could be out of pocket by $8 billion after a landmark court ruling gave casual workers the same rights as full-time staff. Brian Seymour has more. Brian, this could affect a huge number of workers. Yes, good afternoon. Up to 1.6 million casual workers may be able to claim leave entitlements, the same as full-time staff, after the federal court ruled that if you look like a full-time worker and you work like a full-time worker, then you are a full-time worker. Casual workers have long traded off entitlements such as sick leave and holiday pay for a slightly higher wage. But in many sectors, including mining, many casual workers are being employed at a lower wage than their full-time counterparts and do not have the same job security. If you want the benefits of a loyal permanent workforce on long-term rosters, then you owe your workforce some security too. This case follows a 2018 ruling and it uh, used the example of a casual mining truckie who was actually getting paid less than his full-time counterparts. The judge is ruling that he then should be entitled 
to the same things as those full-time workers. The Australian Industry Group has condemned this ruling, saying it will mean employers have to come up with $8 billion in back pay. This is a disaster for us economically. It's a very bad sign for business. The opposition is calling on the government to support this ruling, saying that for too long casual workers have been denied security, particularly now when so many are worried about the future. We want to embark on a genuine process of consultation with employers and employees to best understand the impact of the decision. So it's not certain yet when casual workers will be able to claim those entitlements. The government could regulate or legislate to effectively overturn this ruling, which could also be appealed all the way up to the High Court. Captain Tom Moore, the war veteran who raised more than $60 million for the UK's health service, has spoken of his delight at being knighted. The World War II veteran walked 100 laps of his garden before his 100th birthday in April. His official title will be Captain Sir Thomas Moore, after a special nomination by the Prime Minister. I think it's lovely. I, I never expected it, but I must say I do like the sound of it. <laughs> Money raised is now being handed out to charities across the country. Next in 7's Afternoon News, costly power play, what you need to know in the hunt for energy discounts. And in Sport with Jim Wilson, the winners and losers as the NRL announces its full season draw. Tonight on 7 News with Mark Fergus. Selfish, dangerous and stupid, a high-speed game ends in a fireball. Growing pressure to lift restrictions faster and how you can cut your power bill in an instant. Tonight on 7 News at 6. Slashing your grocery bill. The six top tips for cutting costs. Make the most of what you buy on Sunrise Tomorrow. I was a dancer all my life. But then when I did retire, I didn't have any super. To be on the pension, it was an enormous struggle. And it got to a point where I thought my house was going to be repossessed. It really worried me. When I found Home Safe, I realized that I could use the equity in my home to pay off my loan. It just cleared all that stress and that worry. Home Safe, the unique alternative to a reverse mortgage for over 60s. What if I can't get to the bank? You can do much of your banking securely with Westpac online banking or mobile app. Like being able to check your balance from the shops and transferring money. It's simple. Search Westpac Register. You'd never clean your surfaces with this. So why use this? Sponges can carry millions of germs. Dead old wipes kill germs instead of spreading them. Now biodegradable and compostable. The difficult part for me was starting. I've lost about 20 pounds, which blows my mind. The psychology aspect of Noom was different than I'd ever seen before. Noom helped me make a couple of lifestyle changes that made achieving that goal very easy. It's a whole mentality change. Now I've lost 10 pounds. Down 22 pounds. 57 pounds. That's a lot of weight. Just to know that you feel yourself again, it makes me so happy and proud. Visit Noom.com and change your life for good. Hey, you there. Powerball has jackpotted to $8 million. Get moving. Grab your ticket now. Play now in-store at thelot.com or on the Lot app. Earth, the funnest planet in the universe. Suzuki is the funnest cars on Earth. Therefore, Suzuki's are the best cars in the universe. Being stuck at home doesn't have to mean being stuck for things to do. Because if you take a look around, there's inspiration everywhere. All you need to do is repurpose, reuse, recycle, and reacquaint yourself with the simple pleasure of play. Ryobi One Plus. One Plus U equals endless possibilities. Available at bunnings.com.au. In the universe, stars are born every day. Just like in Compton, Western Victoria, where for over 93 years, we've created not just butter, but a star. Western star. More than butter. 
Nearly a quarter of all Australian households are paying too much for their electricity, despite price cuts being just a phone call away. Serena Andaloro has been working on this story. Serena, this has only been made worse by the coronavirus lockdown. Good afternoon to you, Anne. Well, household energy use has spiked with so many working and schooling from home during COVID-19. It's the perfect recipe for power bill shock. Wholesale power prices are the lowest they've been in nearly eight years. A quarter of residential customers are paying too much for their energy needs. And now people have been working from home. The amount of energy they're using is going to go through the roof. But according to the Australian Energy Regulator, 24% of residential electricity customers are on a default market offer, meaning they're paying the highest rate allowed by the regulator. So those customers have historically paid some of the highest prices in the market. At six, we'll tell you some simple ways you can save hundreds of dollars on your next energy bill, keeping all the power in your hands. Time for sport with Jim Wilson and the Eels are excited about their season draw. They sure are, Anne. Good afternoon to you. Afternoon, everyone. The NRL has confirmed the full draw a week out from the season restarting when the Broncos host the Eels in Brisbane. After starting with back-to-back -back losses, the task for two-time premiers, the Roosters, has been made even tougher. They have to play title favourites, the Storm and Raiders, twice. Now, there's reason for Parramatta fans to be optimistic about ending their 34-year title drought. The Eels get to play plenty of games at Bank West Stadium in a draw that sees them tackle Sydney rivals, the Panthers, Tigers, Seagulls and Bulldogs twice. It's none of us that are talking ourselves up. We're just here doing our job, going, going about our work and, you know, we'll try and put it, put it together on, on the weekends. The season resumes with the Eels taking on the Broncos next Thursday night at Suncorp Stadium. Then it's the Cowboys hosting the Titans on Friday night, followed by the Roosters versus the Rabbitohs at Bank West. On Saturday, the Warriors and Dragons clashing Gosford. Then the Sharkies play the West Tigers at Bank West and the Storm host the Raiders in Melbourne. On Sunday, the Panthers host the Knights in Campbelltown and Manly play Canterbury in Gosford. Talks have continued today between the NRL and referees hoping to avoid an arbitration hearing at the Fair Work Commission this weekend. Former player and referee Luke Phillips says not all officials are opposed to the push for one ref. I do know that there's you know, a little bit of split in there because you know, I know some of the top refs aren't too bothered by it. Desi Hasler says the extra time off has been a huge benefit for the Sea Eagles who play Hasler's old team, the Bulldogs, on Sunday week. Any clubs that have had uh, injuries at uh, this six, seven week break's been really good. So uh, I'd imagine um, both sides are, um, are starting pretty healthy. And the Newcastle Knights have signed veteran Broncos hooker Andrew McCulloch this afternoon. It's effective immediately until the end of the season. Premier League stars remain divided over whether it's safe to train during this health crisis. One of Chelsea's biggest stars, French World Cup winner N'Golo Conte, is the latest player to refuse to train because of health concerns. But the bulk of players have no issues. The captain of Manchester United says he's content with the protocols in place. It seems so safe and everyone's respecting it so well. So long may that continue and I'm sure no one will have any problems. Officials hope to restart the competition in late June. Shane Van Gisbergen is the new leader of the Supercar Z Series, racing on virtual versions of the NASCAR circuits in Charlotte and Daytona. The racing was fast and furious, as we've come to expect. There's contact. Monstrous contact. Van Gisbergen trips over. Waters trips over. It was a night to forget for previous championship leader Scotty McLaughlin. Van Gisbergen won all three races to open up a 64-point lead at the top of the standings with three rounds to go. Well, he was a master with the willow in hand and cricket... He's visiting, but now he's found a reason to stay. Beautiful day. Yeah, that's summer bay for you. Do you always flirt with your brother's dates? You want me? Oh, yeah. Amongst residents, and now Newmarch House, after consulting with New South Wales Health, is planning on allowing families to visit loved ones in their rooms and limited communal dinners for healthy residents. It's due to start June 1st, but with reportedly 12 positive cases still at a facility that has seen 19 lives lost due to the virus, some families are worried opening things up now is simply too soon. I really don't understand why they're not going up to the hospital. 
you know, I mean, that, that surely would be the best place to care for them. Now, New South Wales Health wants to pretend it has nothing to do with this aged care facility. It does and it must, and any future decision should be based on health advice, not what is easy for Anglicare. The letter also revealing the daily staff testing that was brought in a few weeks ago is also being scaled back to once a week screening. And Thank you. Online job ads have spiked, hinting at a turnaround in the job market as businesses begin to reopen. For more, let's bring in Network Finance Editor Gemma Acton. Hello, Gemma. This is what many Australian workers have been hoping to hear. Yes, and workers, businesses, recruiters, everyone looking to think that April is hopefully the worst point given that month we were in lockdown for the entire period. Today's numbers were certainly encouraging, seeing around 20-30% rise in job listings in every state in Australia. But remember, if we look back to February, we're still around 60-70% to 70 below the levels we were seeing then for new job listings. And certainly the mood is still extremely cautious among businesses. A lot of employers are sort of waiting to see how the restrictions are, are lifted and what that would mean for their operating models. And different industries are moving at different paces because of that. Gemma, how did our share market perform today? Well, and it all looks so promising this morning. About 15 minutes into trade, uh, the share market soared. But since then, it's been working its way down. By lunchtime, shares were firmly in the red. Regained a little ground, but still finished lower. This is really on the back of growing concerns about our worsening trade relationship with China. Gemma Acton reporting. Thank you, Gemma. There have been two more shocking crashes in Sydney. At Haymarket, a pedestrian has been hit by a driver who was five times the limit. And as Andrew Denny reports, two men have been dragged alive from a burning wreck caught on camera. Well, it's fair to say police are frustrated by a large number of crashes that have happened around Sydney in the past 24 hours. They say were entirely avoidable and could easily have gotten people killed. The most dramatic of these happened last night on Punchbowl Road at Lakemba when a speeding car slammed into a parked truck and burst into flames. Security cameras show the silver Mazda street racing another vehicle when it spun out of control and crashed sideways into the tray of the truck. The two 19-year-old men inside were trapped as the car started to burn and it was only through the bravery of bystanders that they got out alive, pulling the men clear before it was engulfed in flames. It was absolutely blowing time after time. The men were taken to hospital incredibly only with minor injuries. Police are yet to lay charges and they are still looking for that second dark coloured vehicle that failed to stop. Also overnight a pedestrian was hit by a drink driver at Haymarket. The 26 year old refusing to give a breath test at the scene and so was arrested eventually returning a blood alcohol result nearly five times over the limit. Now as lockdowns ease and more drivers start getting back on the road, police say they need to start taking more care or it will cost lives. Thanks, Andrew. Still to come on 7's Afternoon News, record fines despite the lockdown, how and where speed cameras are raking in the cash. Our whale rescuer learns his fate. What punishment for the tinny hero? And it's 17 degrees in Parramatta. Brownie has city's forecast soon. There's a story here we don't know yet. Unravel a new trail of clues every Wednesday and Thursday. What do you want them to see? Seven Flicks brings together the most brilliant minds. Hey, the clock's ticking. Let's get out there. Each with a very unique way. What do you know? All sorts of things. Of cracking cases. You're not going to want to miss this. The world's greatest crime dramas. Wednesday and Thursday on Seven Flicks. If you're looking for a simple home loan with a great low rate, then walk this way. With a Rams Essential Home Loan, you can enjoy both. Backed by our famous silver service. Rams. Greater together. It's LDV for me. It's LDV for me. More and more people are saying it's LDV for me. Because the LDV T64 by 4 diesel is from just 27490 drive away. And eligible businesses may be able to claim the government instant asset write-off. Hurry. Offer ends May 31. A lot of us are spending more time at home, Ow. using a lot more electricity and internet. Unfortunately, mm. I select can't help with your naked partner walking past your big presentation, but we could help shrink those household bills. Now's the time to compare, select and save with iSelect. 
on 13 19 20. Somebody just knocked at my door. I want this package there. Oh, this is dope. Wait, a massive stain on it. <laughs> and this vanish. I feel like this is some kind of challenge. Let's go figure this out. To add half a scoop to cold water. Let's see if we can get this stain out. Yeah, I actually can't believe how quick it's working. So I got the jumper on now. I'm actually feeling this. For amazing results, just cold wash with Vanish Oxy Action. Used oil deluxe crisps from Red Rock Deli. Your Ford dealer is still open and ready to help your business get back to business with high vis value. So you can get a hard working Ranger XLT for only $54,990 drive away, or the great value Ranger XLS for just $46,490 drive away. And don't forget to check if your business is eligible for the government's instant asset write off this financial year. So hurry into your Ford dealer now for high vis value. Big money. Oh boy. Means big risks. It's a challenge, and I'm yeah. up for the challenges. New the Chase, weekdays on seven. Now to a story of pure luck. An Italian accountant has won an original Pablo Picasso painting worth more than one and a half million dollars in a French charity raffle. Her son bought a raffle ticket for $150 and gave it to her as a gift. The artwork is an oil on canvas that Picasso painted in 1921. A Gold Coast man who rescued a young whale trapped in shark nets has managed to escape a fine. Django sped out to the trapped animal in a tinny, jumped into the water and bravely cut it free. Fisheries Queensland has served him with two infringement notices after he entered the exclusion zone around the netting. They say he put himself and the whale in serious danger and that animal rescue had been only minutes away. The state government's been cleaning up on pandemic penalties with March speed camera takings of almost $21 million. Drivers perhaps carried away with largely empty roads. Tom Sakers covering the story. Tom, there's another concern about an alleged lack of school crossing supervisors. Well, Anne, the opposition is worried that school principals have been left with the responsibility of school kids' safety outside the school gates on the roads because they say lollipop workers are being underrepresented because of the COVID-19 lockdowns. They said the government had failed to fulfil its promise to hire 300 new lollipop workers and only hired 54 since last year's election. Yeah, there's been a reduction in the number of lollipop people out at major intersections to slow down cars. That leads to more people breaking the law. But the government told 7 News it was on track to reach 300 new lollipop workers, which was always planned to occur over four years. The calls to increase school safety come as new speed and red light camera revenue numbers showed a huge increase in fines, despite less traffic on the roads. In March, the government raked in $21 million compared to $15 million in April, perhaps because of confusion about whether school zones were still enforceable in the lockdown period or simply because there was more space on the roads. I suspect that people may have gotten away with themselves a bit, having driving on roads in the peak hour that they would normally be bumper to bumper. The opposition urged speeding drivers in difficult financial situations to ask for lenience, but the Premier Gladys Berejiklian has no sympathy for the rule breakers. No, speeding is a crime. Do not do it. It kills people. School zones operate on all gazetted school days, whether the kids are at school or not. Anne? Thanks, Tom. Mike Ferguson joins us now with a look at what's coming up in 7 News at 6pm. Hello, Mark. What have you got for us? Yeah, hello there. Anne will have the very latest on that frightening crash in Sydney South West where an SUV has ploughed into shops at Greenacre. We know 12 people have been hurt as police investigate whether it was sparked by road rage. Much more from our reporters on the scene at 6 o'clock. Also selfish, dangerous and stupid, that's how police have described the driver of a car caught on camera street racing in Lakemba before crashing in a ball of flames. Also thousands of new transport jobs to get Sydney moving again as pressure mounts for restrictions to be lifted on cafes and restaurants next month. 
Plus, Pauline Hanson weighs in to the border war with Queensland, threatening to take the state to the High Court. Plans for a people's loop at Parramatta Park are cutting cars to make way for walkers. And energy prices are falling, so why are your bills going up? How to get a better deal with one simple phone call. And all that and plenty more, Sydney 7 News tonight at 6 o'clock. Thanks, Fogo. See you then. UK jobless claims soared by nearly 70% in April, with Australians caught in the economic upheaval. Out of work and with plenty of free time, they've put up their hands to help others, as Hugh Whitfeld reports from London. This is a car park originally built for the Olympic Games in London, but it's being turned into a food distribution hub, one of 33 across the British capital, where mainly volunteers are packing food parcels for some of the city's vulnerable citizens. Many of them can't leave home because they are considered vulnerable to catching coronavirus. Other people need economic and financial help, having lost their jobs. And among the volunteers helping out to pack the food are some Australians themselves who've been furloughed from work or placed onto Britain's version of the JobKeeper program. Uh, I've been furloughed from, from my job, so I had a lot more time on my hands than I'm used to. Um, and I love living in Hackney. It's really nice to be able to do something actually positive for the community. It's not generally the most high socioeconomic area anyway, so to give them a service where it's protecting them, protecting the community, it's pretty straightforward value that we're adding, I guess. You can see that people need it. Um, you see all the homelessness around, which is so different from Australia and New Zealand. Thousands of food parcels are being packed across London every day and the demand is only getting bigger as economic reality bites. Analysts expect that unemployment in Britain will be worse this year than during the depths of the financial crisis. It is not just a health emergency in this country, it is an economic one as well. Next in 7's Afternoon News, David Brown will be here with your latest weather forecast. Hello, Daniel. I have been watching you. Yeah, I played footy from Gold Coast. Oh, no. Bad ball, bad ball. Oh, I got sacked. Oh. Was lucky enough to get picked up by Carlton. They sacked me again. They may have sacked you, but I have chosen you. I got a VV. Welcome to my brand new house. You'll need something to make you stand out. My nose. Humor will only get you so far. Oh. Damn it. Have you got what it takes to be the last one in my house? I didn't really believe I could play footy, but I believe I can win this. I am Big Brother. Who wins? You decide. Hi, Chris. As one of our Care Super members, let's go see your super at work. Hold on. I'll show you some of the opportunities and possibilities that are being explored for you. Your super should work as hard as you do. So we're making sure it does. From home time to sleepy time, IKEA designs around life's precious moments. So make mess, mohawks, and laugh until your belly hurts. Because with IKEA, there really is no place like home. You wash loads, but do you ever wash your washing machine? Every load leaves behind grime and, ugh, what's that smell? Pino Clean Washing Machine Cleaner removes 99.9% .9 of germs, leaving it clean and fresh for longer. It's not clean, unless it's Pino Clean. A few days ago, James had neck pain. Then he discovered Voltaren Emil Gel. It relieves pain two times faster and reduces inflammation. Voltaren, the joy of movement. It's only natural to want what's best for your toddler. 100% grass-fed milk is better by nature. We know that nature provides the best, which is why 100% grass-fed milk is free from palm oil, GMO and growth hormones. 100% grass-fed milk encourages growth and development, whilst gentle on toddler's tummy and easy to digest. So you have the peace of mind knowing you've made the natural choice. 100% grass-fed milk, made in New Zealand, better by nature. With Belong, you get 10 gigs of mobile data for $25 a month. That's 10 gigs of family time. 10 gigs of scrolling through memory lane. 10 gigs of holiday escapes. Or 10 gigs of catching up with the family. Plus, unlimited international calls and texts to selected countries for $5 extra. We all spend family time differently. Together, we're different. Belong. When a cold disturbs your family's sleep, Vicks Vapor Rub relieves cough, nasal congestion, muscle aches and pains. They sleep, you sleep.
Vicks Vapor Rub. Relieves four cough and cold symptoms. What are you here for? Win, I want the cash. Hold hard. It's go big or go home. Ah, forget it. It's up. But big money. Oh, boy. Means big risks. It's oh. a challenge, and I'm yeah. up for the challenges. <gasps> Belting him out. New The Chase, coming up next on 7. This weather report brought to you by Bridgestone Select for tyres and car servicing. Energy prices are falling, but their power play is costing you more. What you can do now to get the cheapest price. 7 News at 6. The latest on our breaking news this hour, 12 people have been injured at Greenacre in Sydney southwest after an SUV ploughed into a shop. Police say the car slammed into another vehicle stopped at traffic lights before crashing into Hijab House, a shop on the corner of that intersection. This vision, obtained by 7 News, shows the car emerging from a cloud of thick smoke before slamming into the shopping strip. None of the injuries are believed to be life-threatening. We'll have the very latest from our reporters on the scene in 7 News at 6 o'clock tonight. David Brown is back now with the very latest forecast. Afternoon, Brownie. Yes, good afternoon, Anne. A fine weather window has opened up across uh, parts of the metro area as we go to air. That said, though, bursts of very heavy rain are likely overnight. And at first tomorrow, as a low pressure system quite simply just winds up off the coast. Today's top, well, cool, wasn't it? Eight, in fact, cold, 18.1 degrees. That happened around about uh, late afternoon. We're expecting colder conditions tomorrow. But at the moment, look at, look at this, it's only five degrees in orange. Can you believe it? It's uh, raining in Canberra. It's around uh, 12 degrees. As we head further south, it's snowing in Threadbow, where it's currently one degree. So we go to the satellite. The uh, latest satellite signature highlights this. It's what we call a CVA. It's a hook in the uh, cloud development itself. There's a low in the middle part of the atmosphere. It's starting to head down towards the uh, surface. We'll see that low gradually develop during the early hours of tomorrow morning. It will intensify. The system whipping up strong to gale force winds. In fact, they're expected to reach uh, storm force along parts of the uh, central coast. It will bring in a very, very heavy rain first thing and then the whole system will gradually clear out to sea. But the bulk of the state, as you can see, is dry and generally clear. Cold in Melbourne tomorrow, just the odd shower or two, around 14 degrees. Cool for Brisbane, only 20 degrees and clear skies. For our city, yes, high wind chill tomorrow, heavy rain during the early part of the morning, then becoming fine in the afternoon. You need a good umbrella and a great jacket because high wind chill, 16 degrees. Check out the comfort guy, I think it says it all. As we move on to the uh, seven day outlook, improving for the weekend, just one or two coastal showers on Saturday, showers expected throughout on Sunday. So batten down the hatches and more at Yeah, six. rug up tomorrow. Thank you very much, Brownie. And that is Sydney's 4pm news for this Thursday. Mark Ferguson will bring you seven news at six o'clock. I'm Ann Sanders. Stay with seven now for The Chase Australia. Australia. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night. Getting my house renovated is like a golden ticket. <laughs>